we're going to hold Holy Ghost Church services every Sunday morning. I'll be there most Sunday mornings. This isn't going to be like some little side project. We're going to give you and your family a place you can go that's a soul-winning church that values the presence of God, where you can get prayed for and ministered to, where there's not a critical race theory lecture or a mass and social distancing 10 minutes of no talking to anybody in the lobby. None of that. We're going to have a place where you're free and where you're free to experience the presence of God. I'm incredibly excited because I know a lot of you have been asking about different meetings and events that we couldn't have during COVID and trust me, we tried so hard. So this really frees us up to do everything that we want to do with healing meetings and women's conferences. So I am so looking forward to seeing you and having you be a part of this. So I want to give you a two-fold call to action. Number one, if your church turned in, to a liberal nightmare in 2020, and you need a place to go. I would be happy to have you at our church. Number two, if you are a partner or a friend of our ministry, Revival Today, this is the biggest move by far we've ever made. By the time we finish remodeling that building, the acquiring of the property, you're looking at a couple of M's. So if you, uh, if you would stand with us now, I'll say thank you ahead of time. Pray and ask the Holy Ghost what he would have you to do. You've been so generous, and I thank you ahead of time for your extreme generosity. I know I speak on behalf of my wife, Everybody here at Revival today, when I say we love you very much, and now I can say I look forward to seeing you face to face here at the new home of Revival today. Hey. And tonight, I would say with Moses, I would say with Joshua, turn, repent, choose God, serve Him, live for Him. That is the message of God tonight to this great audience of people at Yankee Stadium. I see revival coming to planet Earth, maybe as, as never, never before. It would be untold numbers, an untold, uncounted multitudes that will be saved. The dead will be raised. The arthritic will be healed. Cancer will be healed. No disease would be able to stand before God's people and that it would be a worldwide situation. There's a church that doesn't just know about God, they know God. They don't just believe his power they carry his power god will shake the united states of america one last time not by might not by power but by my spirit Welcome to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. As a You must be new or something, man. We the best, man.
Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Check the Market, where we check the market every morning that the market is open. Good morning, everybody. Bob, Ellen, Maria, Alicia, AJ from New Jersey, Gerald, Stock Market Samurai is on too. How's everybody doing? Netflix is going to drop again. We actually have some news about Netflix today. But yeah, it looks like uh, they're not doing too well. But that's why they're trying to diversify and get into other spaces. Betsy, good morning. Make sure you share the broadcast. Jason, good morning. Make sure you share the broadcast with all your family, with everybody. Doge. Doge news first. I have some news about Doge too. Mark Zuckerberg sold Facebook shares every business day since November. I'm not surprised. He might be, he might be going to space. <laughs> when is that? That's coming up too, the 17th, I believe, right? Two more days. We got some news on Doge today. All right, let's get started. There we go. Worst trade in history. I wish I'd kept my 1,700 Bitcoins at six cents instead of selling them at 30 cents. Now they're at $8. And this was in 2011. How do you think this guy feels today? <laughs> or in May? <laughs> Man, our hearts go out to you, Mr. Greg Schoen. <laughs> All right, next. Watching the first green candle of a trade. There he is, the little prince of England. And then watching the subsequent red candles. That's been me the last couple of days there. The market's always been closing opposite of where it, where it opens. Look at that. That's just a, a family and sorrow there. All right, next. There we go. Netflix plans video games expansion, hires game development VP from Facebook. So it looks like Netflix realizes that they need to diversify and get into other arenas. So maybe we'll see a Netflix box that you can play very soon. Who knows? Mike Verdu comes to Netflix with experience heading game teams at Facebook and EA. Do, hasn't Netflix had uh, like interactive movies where you can like pick the outcome, right? Yeah. So they, they might be doing something like that with this with games. And the markets are open. Let's see. Right now it's looking like red candles starting the day off. Oh man, it's dropping. Dropping quick. It's opening in the red, so we'll see if it ends in the green. All right, let's see the article. Netflix is looking to expand its offerings beyond movies and TV shows. The Los Gatos... California-based streaming service has hired Mike Verdu as the vice president of game development, a Netflix spokesperson told Fox Business. Verdu was most recently Facebook's vice president of content for Facebook Reality Labs, where he oversaw a VR game studio and teams bringing games and other apps to its Oculus VR headsets. He also was previously the head of mobile, mobile games at EA and held leadership roles at several game developers, including Kabam and Zynga. He'll report to Netflix CEO and Chief Product Officer Greg Peters, the spokesperson said. Continue. The news was first reported by Bloomberg on Wednesday. The service plans to add gaming in the next year, according to the report. Netflix has reportedly been eyeing games for years and has flirted with interactive content before, with a few movies like Black Mirror, Bandersnatch, 
which a lot of you are holding a remote or game controller to make decisions for the protagonist, a video game developer. Continue. Several tech companies have been working to build streaming game services with varying degrees of success. Google Stadia announced this week that it was revising the share of money it pays developers in an apparent effort to expand its offerings. Meanwhile, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella told investors in January that his Xbox Game Pass had more than 18 million subscribers paying $9.99 per month. In April, Netflix announced that it had seen a 24-year-over-year 24% year-over-year revenue growth to $7.16 billion in its first quarter earnings report. However, the company also fell short of its projection of 6 million new subscribers with just 4 million in the quarter. Netflix's second quarter results are due to be released on July 20th. So we'll take a look at them, see how they're doing then, see what the stock is doing with this news. Con next. Wheels Up, Uber of the Sky, begins trading on the New York Stock Exchange. Wheels Up wants to be the Uber of the Sky. Wheels Up is a subscription-based... Uh, I believe they have... I don't, I don't think they have fractional ownership, but they're uh, a subscription-based private charter company for aircraft. So let's see the article. Wheels Up has officially become the first private aviation company to trade on the New York Stock Exchange Wednesday under the ticker symbol UP Up. CEO Kenny Dichter, in an interview with Fox Business earlier this month, described the rebound in the travel industry as the Roaring Twenties and said the company aims to be the Uber of the sky. Shares jumped over 8% in their debut. The private jet travel company officially closed a transaction with Aspirational Consumer Lifestyle Core, a special purpose as an acquisition company, or SPAC, on Tuesday, SPACs are shell companies that have no active business operations but are listed on major exchanges where investors can buy shares. They use the funds raised by their sponsors and investors to acquire other companies. So they're trading on the ticker symbol up. And it looks like they're already up 8%. So up is up. <laughs> All right, next. <laughs> Reddit traders are upending the world of credit investing too. It looks like Reddit traders have really done damage to hedge funds and the markets because they're rethinking everything. Let's take a look. It was a type of master stroke that could make a Wall Street career. Jason Mudrick's financing of AMC Holdings at the height of the pandemic netted his hedge fund hundreds of millions of dollars in just a few months. Then in the blink of an eye, it was gone. Options contracts meant to hedge the bullish wager went haywire as retail traders flocked to AMC stock, pushing shares to once unimaginable heights and costing Mudrick Capital Management all of its gains and more. Distressed investors have long had to have thick skins taking criticism as predators, even as they sometimes rescue firms no one else will touch and generate returns for pensions, endowments, and foundations. But life in the business is getting even harder. <sighs> As they can no longer count on a predictable stock market to hedge massive, multi-pronged bets. Well, welcome to the club, everybody. Continue. With equity swept up in the whims of exuberant day traders, some funds are now being forced to rethink their business models. It's become much harder a much harder calculus to even consider, said Scott Hartman, the global co-head of corporate credit and trading at $14 billion investment firm Varda Partners. Frankly, many funds have decided to stay away from shorting these stocks altogether, which is sad for us because that means we won't have AMCs and GameStops anymore. Continue. Granted, there are other investment opportunities. Some distressed funds are pivoting to private lending and emerging market plays, and often other ways that money managers can hedge their exposure or engage in forms of capital structure arbitrage. Plenty of their targets, after all, have no public equity. But fiscal and monetary stimulus have greased markets so thoroughly that many of the riskiest companies are now breezing through debt walls with cheap new financing rather than running into the kind of dead ends and defaults that generate restructuring or profitable loan-to-own planes place. Indeed, many fund managers say that beyond disrupting their ability to hedge, retail traders are increasingly propping up troubled firms, further limiting the universe 
of investment opportunities. So I don't know if we're going to continue to have opportunities like we did with AMC and GameStop if these funds aren't shorting any of them, if they're not heavily shorted like they used to be. Then there won't be such uh, major short squeezes that like we've seen before. All right, next. TSMC, we've talked about them before. They were on our list to research a while back. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Corporation expects auto chip shortage to abate this quarter. A dearth of semiconductors has stymied manufacturing activity in the auto industry. Let's see the article. The world's largest contract chip maker said it expects a chip shortage that has hampered car makers to start easing in the next few months after it ramped up its production of auto chips. The company is on track to increase output of microcontrollers used in cars by about 60% this year compared with last. Chief Executive C.C. Wei said in an earnings call on Thursday, however, he said the broader semiconductor shortage could persist until 22. A dearth of semiconductors used in products including home appliances and smartphones has stymied manufacturing activity, notably in the auto industry. That short but fall would be greatly reduced for TSMC customers in the current quarter. That's why it's also taken so long for Apple, for iPhones and uh, Apple computers to ship. I bought one the other day for the office. And how long did that one take? Yeah, it was like six weeks for it to get here. It used to be, you know, a couple days. They'd have it out in five days. So it's really, uh, there is really a, a backlog of these semiconductors. Next article. How is the economy doing? Here's what banks say. Quarterly earnings from JP Morgan, Goldman, and other big banks show an economy going strong. The question is, for how long? See the article? Here's what the biggest U.S. banks are telling us about the state of the economy. Consumer spending is returning to pre-pandemic levels, and borrowing appears poised to rise. Markets are cooling, but deal-making is as hot as ever. Still, the recovery remains vulnerable. Bank executives said COVID-19 variants are driving up case counts, raising the specter of new lockdowns. Government aid programs that kept many Americans afloat are about to expire. Americans are spending again, even more than they were pre-pandemic, booking trips and paying for restaurant meals with their credit cards, flush with cash from government stimulus programs. They're paying down their car debt faster than they are spending, which is bad news for the banks. That could change as supply chain bottlenecks ease for cars, refrigerators, and other big-ticket items. The pump is primed for more borrowing, said Jamie Dimon. Continue. What we're seeing are people starting to spend and act in a way that seems more like the way it was before the pandemic started, the Wells Fargo CFO said. The housing market's on fire. Housing market remained red hot with buyers bidding up the prices of second homes and suburban mansions. Wells Fargo and JP Morgan extended more mortgages than in the first quarter, which was already a blockbuster stretch for home lending. But many are being priced out of the market, raising questions about growth. We've seen so much home price appreciation that maybe affordability starts to be a little bit of a headwind. I'm sure they'll figure it out. They'll do what they did in 2008 and give money to everybody and whoever wants money. That way they can keep making money. Next. Here we go. Here's the Dogecoin news. Dogecoin co-creator blasts crypto as a scam to help the rich get richer. In a Twitter thread, Jackson Palmer says the crypto industry exploits the worst parts of capitalism. By a show of hands, if you would have to guess, would you say that he's a socialist? Yes, you think so? I think so too. <laughs> I read this article and I think he's just a little upset that he missed out on the uh, the Dogecoin boom. Since he's, he created it, he should have kept most of it, but he didn't. That's on you, buddy. Let's see the article. <laughs> yes, everybody agrees. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Dogecoin was made as a joke, but Jackson Palmer really doesn't think it's funny anymore. <laughs> it's because he missed out. 
Palmer, who co-created the mock cryptocurrency of 2013 with Billy Marcus, took to Twitter on Wednesday to denounce the state of crypto in no uncertain terms. After years of studying it, I believe that cryptocurrency is an inherently right-wing, hyper-capitalistic technology built primarily to amplify the wealth of its proponents through a combination of tax avoidance, diminished regulatory oversight, and artificially enforced, enforced scarcity. Yes, all of those things are true. I don't know if it's right-wing because anybody can invest in it, not just right-wing or left-wing or center, everybody. But yeah, it is a, a capitalistic technology that was built to you know, be a free system. Continue. Socialists posting their L's. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> Far from being a decentralized libertarian alternative to traditional monetary systems, crypto is controlled by a powerful cartel of wealthy figures. Like the Winklevoss twins? Come on. He said, who have evolved to incorporate many of the same institutions tied to the existing centralized financial system they supposedly set out to replace. Meanwhile, the rich get richer and the most vulnerable investors are exposed to the most risk. Yeah, but they also, they were also buying Lambos a couple of months ago, so relax. The cryptocurrency industry leverages a network of shady business connections, bot influencers, and pay-for-play media outlets to perpetuate a cult-like get-rich-quick funnel designed to extract new money from the financially desperate and naive. I don't think that hedge funds and, uh, etc. are financially desperate and naive. I mean, they were in 2008, but, uh, right now they aren't. Financial exploitation undoubtedly existed before cryptocurrency, but cryptocurrency is almost purpose-built to make the funnel of profiteering more efficient for those at the top and less safeguarded for the vulnerable. Hmm. Continue. Looks like he still lives at his mom's base. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he is. He should have kept his Dogecoin when he created it and sold it. Then he would be one of those billionaires at the top that are, you know, at the top of the cryptocurrencies. Parma's Dogecoin co-creator Marcus conceded his points are generally valid. This isn't the first time Palmer had rallied against cryptocurrencies. After Dogecoin reached a market cap of $2 billion in 2017, he wrote in Vice that something is very wrong. I'm pretty sure he'd already sold all of his holdings in 20, by 2017. And that the crypto industry has been hijacked by scammers and opportunists. And you're not one of them? You created a cryptocurrency as a joke. That would make you a scammer. <laughs> Things have only gotten crazier since then. Though it has lost about two-thirds of its value since its May peak, Dogecoin is still up more than 4,100% year-to-date, with a current market cap above $28 billion. Both Palmer and Marcus stepped away from Dogecoin years ago, but while Marcus is still active in the crypto world, Palmer is done. In 2017, Vice article, Palmer said he ended his involvement with Dogecoin and crypto in 2015 and donated his proceeds to charity. And don't ask him about it again. <laughs> I'm often asked if I will return to cryptocurrency or begin regularly sharing my thoughts on the topic again. My answer is a wholehearted no. Man, you're going to miss out. Continue. <laughs> That's it. All right, next. I would agree Safe Moon is... I mean, it's in the same class as Dogecoin. But it's just more difficult to buy. And there are a lot there are a lot of scams out there. There are a lot of crypto scams, and they're using, you know, TikTok stars and whoever to pump those. But there are some valid ones out there. Bitcoin, Ethereum. I mean, honestly, as much as I don't want to, I would put Dogecoin in that category too, because there's we've seen articles of of uh, companies accepting Dogecoin as payments. So I guess it is getting some validity. But yeah, he is, he is just salty for real. And you can really hear it through those tweets. <laughs> All right, next. A benchmark beating robot thinks AMC, AMC will outperform Facebook and GameStop. It likes these other stocks too. 
AMOM, an artificial intelligence-driven fund, also did shares in another meme stock in July. All right, let's see the article. An exchange-traded fund run by artificial intelligence bought AMC stock at the beginning of July, preferring shares in the cinema chain and retail investor favorite over the likes of Facebook or Walmart. The QRAFT AI-enhanced U.S. Large Cup Momentum ETF trading as AMOM on the New York Stock Exchange removed some major technology and retail stocks from its portfolio this month as it shifted to focus on pandemic trades and reducing volatility. So it got rid of Home Depot, Walmart, Adobe, Facebook, Texas Instruments, and it added AMC. Brennan, did you sell your AMC? Might go back up. All right, continue. A flock of investors largely organized on social media platform Reddit helped squeeze hedge funds short positions on companies including GameStop and AMC earlier this year. The trading frenzy caused multi-billion dollar losses for hedge funds, unbelievable gains for individuals that timed it right and ushered in a new era of internet-inspired trading. AMC's stock price rose 570% from January 20th to 27th, from nearly $3 a share to almost $20. Shares in the group are now up close to 1,500%, uh, so far in 2021, trading around $33 a share. And now the AI calling the shots at AMOM thinks the stock will move even higher in July, buying enough shares to make up 1.8% of the fund, bringing AMC into the fold as the robot-ditched fellow meme stock GameStop, which was added to AMOM in May, but booted out after the stock fell more than 14% in June. Continue. QRAF's AI model is not specifically designed to invest in meme stocks, but rather in stocks with high capital appreciation potential, Gi Suk Oh, a managing director at QRAFT and the head of its Asia Pacific business, told Market Watch, AI is not swayed by prejudice or bias and may pick up meme stocks if the momentum seems highly positive. This month, our model found AMC more opportunistic than other meme stocks, meme stocks like GameStop. It also added O'Reilly Auto Parts, Cadence Design Systems, Best Buy, Biotech, Cancer Specialist Seagen, and Enterprise Software Developer HubSpot. So there's a couple you can take a look at if you want to. And it looks like AMC might be going higher if this AI model is correct. Mike Frost, dude should write a book on how to hold a resentment 101. <laughs> For real. All right, next. Morgan Stanley beats profit estimates on capital markets and deal-making boom. Morgan Stanley has been on our list of uh, stocks to research. Let's see the article. Morgan Stanley reported a better than expected quarterly profit on Thursday as its investment banking business benefited from record levels of capital market activity and helped offset a drop in fixed income underwriting revenue. The Wall Street Bank said its net income applicable to common shareholders rose to $3.4 billion in the second quarter and to June 30th from $3.05 billion a year earlier. On a per share basis, however, the bank's profit fell to $1.85 from $1.96. Analysts on average were expecting the bank to report a profit of $1.65 per share. So it looks like they still had a beat. According to IBES data from Refinitiv, net revenue rose to $14.8 billion in the quarter compared with $13.7 a year earlier. Equity trading for the bank ticked down slightly from the prior quarter but was up overall from the year earlier quarter. Bond trading revenue fell almost to half of what it was a year earlier. So Morgan Stanley doing good. I believe their stock did go down a little bit though. Take a look here. Yes, Morgan Stanley did go down today. They're at 92. They're still doing pretty good, though. All right, next. GM warns Bolt EV owners, don't park them inside or charge them unattended overnight. So if you own a Chevy Bolt, it looks like you're going to have to sit right next to it as it's charging at night. 
Oh man. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Let's see the article. The Vermont State Police re released this photo of the 2019 Chevy Bolt EV that caught fire on July 1st, 21, in the driveway of State Representative Timothy Briglin, a Democrat. I don't want to say I'm surprised that he's driving a Chevy Bolt in Vermont, <laughs> but <laughs> kind of expected that. Let's see the article. Yeah, that's shot not just for phones. Chevy, uh, th these batteries, uh, I mean, it's crazy. General Motors is telling owners of 2017, 2019 Bolt EVs that were part of a recent recall not to park their vehicles inside or charge them unattended overnight after two of the vehicles caught fire. Two Bolt EVs were repaired as part of the recall of nearly 69,000 of the vehicles that they sold that many of them. My goodness. The recall was initially announced in November by GM and the National Highway Safety Traffic Safety National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. One of the fires occurred while the vehicle was charging at the home of a new Vermont state lawmaker earlier this month. The other fire happened in New Jersey, a spokesman for GM said, adding that it was notified about it earlier this week. Continue. It don't don't plug your iPhone in overnight. That's basically what they're that's basically what they're saying. <laughs> General Motors has been notified of two recent Chevrolet Bolt EV fire incidents and vehicles that were remedied as part of the safety recall announced in November 2020. The company said in an email statement, "Out of an abundance of caution, we're asking owners of the 17 to 19 Chevrolet Bolt EVs who were part of the recall population to park their vehicles outdoors." immediately after charging and not leave their vehicles charging overnight we, while we investigate these incidents. The NHTSA on Wednesday said battery cell packs in the impacted vehicles have the potential to smoke and ignite internally, which could spread to the rest of the vehicle and cause a structure fire if the vehicle is parked inside a garage or near a house. Customers who have not had the repair completed should still visit their dealer for the recall while the investigation continues, according to the automaker. Continue. At GM, safety is our highest priority, obviously, and we are moving as quickly as we can to investigate this issue. The NHTSA in October opened an investigation to three reported fires. I thought there's only two. Three uh, involving Chevrolet Bolt EVs. The automaker is cooperating with the Federal Vehicle Safety Agency. Another Bolt EV that caught fire was reported by media outlets in May, but not all the recall repairs have been conducted on that vehicle. GM said it bought back some of the recalled vehicles, but declined to say how many. Automakers often buy back recalled vehicles to appease unhappy customers and avoid triggering state lemon laws and litigation. Continue. So there you have it. Looks like the battery packs in some of those vehicles are faulty. Just like they were. What what was that? The Sam uh, the Samsung Note, right? That wasn't allowed on airplanes for a while. They would have like whenever you'd, you'd fly, they would have uh, the stewardess when she was giving her spiel would be like, if you have a Samsung Galaxy Note, turn it off, or whatever it was. They weren't allowed on planes. Something crazy. Soon they'll be advertising the Bolt-only vehicle. <laughs> you can make s'mores while charging. <laughs> Insure United Health raises 2021 profit view after results top estimates. Continue. United Health Group beat quarterly profit estimates and raised its full-year earnings target on Thursday as the largest U.S. Health, US health insurer reported strong growth in its Optum unit that manages drug benefits. The industry bellwether raised its full-year profit target for the second time this year and now expects adjusted earnings of 1830 to 1880 per share in 21 compared with its previous forecast. So United Health Group beat their earnings. The percentage of collected premiums spent on medical services of 82.8% compared with 70.2% a year earlier. 
when patients put off non-urgent care due to the COVID-19 pandemic. All right, next article. Bubble warning. The S&P 500 has only been this expensive for 4% of the past 140 years. I thought this was article was very interesting. Let's read it. On July 12th, the S&P 500 posted an all, a new all-time record close of 4,385, extending its gains since the start of 21 to 16.8%. But the market reached another milestone that should gravely concern prudent investors, a highly respected valuation gauge developed by Yale economist and Nobel laureate Robert Schiller, hit a mark showing the S&P 500 is now priced higher, is now pricier than in 96% of all quarters over the past 141 years. Put differently, big cap stocks have been this expensive only 4% of the time in recorded history of equity markets. That makes sense. Because every stock that I look at has just an incredible P.E. ratio or price to book ratio. I mean, it's crazy. The new reading is so extreme that it suggests stocks may be soaring in a speculative frenzy unhinged from fundamentals. It also spotlights the bull's view that the current regime of super slim interest rates mean that big caps can sustain or even expand P.E. multiples virtually never before seen. The Schiller data points to a very different outcome. Just because equities are likely to beat ultra-low yielding treasuries in the years ahead doesn't mean stocks will keep delivering strong gains. Quite the contrary. The data suggests that treasuries will do extremely poorly and the S&P should underperform as well, only less so. Continue. U.S. big caps will battle three powerful headwinds. First, the fall in real rates that has done so much to lift valuations will inevitably reverse. Second, that downdraft pressures today uh, downdraft pressures today is high flying PE multiples. Third, the US economy is destined to grow at a far slower pace than in recent decades, reducing profit gains from stupendous before the pandemic to slim in the years ahead since mid 2020. It's been all about momentum going forward. It'll be all about the other big M in the market math. The highest level in nearly a quarter century, the yardstick flashing red is Schiller's cyclical adjusted price to earnings ratio or CAPE. Calculating the current PE using the past year's earnings per share is misleading because profits are extremely erratic. When earnings spike to unsustainable heights, PE shrink to make prices look artificially cheap. When EPS craters, as during the pandemic, shares appear outrageously expensive, even though profits are certain to rebound, as indeed happened in the, re in the current recovery. So it looks like stocks are very expensive. I mean, they are very expensive right now. And I thought that was uh, kind of crazy that it's only been this expensive in 4% of the quarters for the last 141 years. I'm definitely going to be doing some due diligence, seeing where I can take some profits. Because this, uh, this is heading to, to heights never seen before. And let's see the next article. <clears throat> Poland and Romania rank in top 10 for number of Bitcoin ATMs. World's total exceeds 23,000. When I saw this, I was like, man, 23,000 ATMs. That's a lot. I think that's more than my banklet gives me access to for free. Let's see it. Two East European nations, Poland and Romania, are now among the top 10 countries hosting the most cryptocurrency ATMs. The global number of teller machines supporting crypto transaction has increased exponentially over the past months, now reaching over 23,000 devices. The growth in popularity and market prices of cryptocurrencies in the past year has led to a spike in the number of locations around the world offering crypto holders automated teller services. Most Bitcoin ATMs let you buy coins with cash and cards, while some devices facilitate two-way transaction allowing users also to sell cryptos. Major currencies such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin Cash are typically supported. Continue. So that's what they look like. Quoting data compiled by CryptoHead, the Warsaw Business Journal recently wrote that Poland has entered the top 10 nations having the highest number of cryptocurrency ATMs. According to this ranking, the country is 7th with 112 crypto teller devices placing behind Hong Kong and ahead of Switzerland. 
which I'm not surprised. Poland is like standing for freedom in Europe. Poland and Hungary, so I'm not surprised that they're getting into this. Continue. The United States tops the chart. The U.S. has a rapidly growing network of Bitcoin ATMs, BATMs, that has exceeded 17,000 machines supporting deposits and withdrawals of cryptocurrency across the country. Its northern neighbor, Canada, ranks second with almost 1,500 ATMs, followed by the U.K. with around 200. All right, next article. Visa to approve cryptocurrency card by Australian startup. Let's see the article. Visa is reportedly set to approve Australian crypto startup Crypto Spend's issuance of debit cards for spending Bitcoin and several other cryptocurrencies. We have a lot of demand for the card. I don't think this is the only card doing that. And there is a lot of demand for these cards because they're giving back uh, rewards in cryptocurrency. So that will be the first time that your rewards could potentially appreciate. Because usually when you get rewards from a card... You know, every five years, they decrease in value. Every three years, your Marriott points go down and things like that. So this is, I think this is a great idea. It'll be the first time cryptocurrencies can be spent using a payments card issued in Australia that runs on the network of one of the international card schemes. Continue. We have a lot of demand for the card. If the market is green, someone could say, it's time to spend some of my profits. On the other side of the fence, another person might say it's going to keep down. I'll hold on to it. But we've seen more spending volume when the price is going up. Prior to Visa's approval, Gretsch and fellow co-founder Richard Voice went through a rigorous process to ensure the privacy and security of users, information as well as compliance with anti-money laundering requirements. Custody of the firm's crypto holdings is provided by BitGo. Visa has also approved ASX listed Novati. To issue the prepaid debit card, the card is expected to be in the market in September. Visa, Visa recently said more than $1 billion were spent on crypto-related, crypto-linked Visa cards in the first half of 21. The company is also partnering with 50 crypto platforms to allow crypto payments at more than 70 million merchants. All right, next. World's largest asset manager, BlackRock, sees very little demand for cryptocurrencies. I was surprised that somebody even said something there, BlackRock, because they're basically the servicer of pension funds, and I don't think that they would invest in cryptocurrencies anyway. That's why they see very little demand for it. All right, next article. UK regulator to launch $11 million campaign warning of crypto risks. The FCA is concerned that crypto holders are likely to be younger and more emotional investors. So it looks like our parents in the Financial Conduct Authority in the UK, whoever's in the UK, it looks like uh, your parents at the FCA don't want you to invest in crypto because you're more emotional and younger and you don't know what you're doing and they don't like it. Let's <laughs> see the article. The UK Financial Conduct Authority has to launch an $11 million marketing campaign to warn young people of the risks in investing in crypto. Why, why wouldn't you launch an 11 million pound campaign to teach young people about investing in schools instead of teaching them about the risks of investing in crypto? The move was announced by CEO Nikhil Rathi in a speech Thursday as part of a webinar on the FCA's role as a proactive regulator. Citing recent research that found almost 2.5 million Britons hold crypto assets, Rathi highlighted the FCA's concern that crypto holders are more likely to be younger and behaving less rationally and more emotionally, egged on by anonymous and unaccountable social media influencers. This, this is a category of consumer that we're not used to engaging with. 18 to 30-year-olds are more likely to be drawn in by social media. Okay, then do something about social media. He compared crypto to GameStop shares in January when at a trading frenzy driven by Reddit forum Wall Street Bets saw the company's stock soar as high as $483 from $18 at the end of 2020. The announcement of the campaign follows hard on the heels of its counterpart in the advertising industry planning to tighten its monitoring of crypto market. The Advertising Standards Authority said July 9th it would proactively looking for potentially misleading or irresponsible ads for crypto products as opposed to its previous approach, which had been more reactive. I say, 
just stay out of it. If these young kids want to learn to, the best way to learn to invest is just to do it. If they lose money, so what? They'll learn from it. All right, let's go over the stocks to research today. And low risk is VWINX, the Vanguard Wellesley Income Fund. This is a mutual fund that seeks to provide long-term growth of income and high and sustainable level of current income and moderate capital appreciation. About 60 to 65% invested in bonds and 30 to 35% in equities. So this is something that you can get that uh, that'll hedge against market downturns a little bit. It has a distribution yield of around 2.3% and an expense ratio of around 0.22%. So it's considered very cheap in the uh, uh, in, in the mutual fund world. That's a very, very low uh, expense ratio. It is considered well below average in risk and has had an average return of around 9.67% since inception in 1970. Has a morning star rating of four stars. If you'd like, if you would have invested 10k, ten thousand dollars in this fund in 1970, you would have slightly over a million dollars today with basic compound interest. That's not factoring in other things, but that's what uh, I did the calculation on that this morning. I thought that was very interesting. Medium risk, Carmax, KMX, Carmax Inc. Carmax is a retailer of used vehicles. They have two sectors, CarMax Sales and CarMax Finance. CarMax has had EPS growth of around 8% over the past five years, revenue growth around 4.58%. Its PE ratio is still under the industry average of 25x at 18x. Price to book is around 4.6% for the most recent quarter. 4.6x, sorry. It's considered a strong buy and has momentum to the upside. I'd buy today for around $134 a share and sell around $155 at the most. Some risks to the company include that it's not liquid enough to satisfy its debt. If there were an economic downturn, it's fairly highly leveraged. Another risk is higher interest rates, competition from companies like Carvana, economic downturn due to the stock market being, to the stock being cyclical. ASRV Amerisurf Financial, a bank holding company that's the high risk. Bank holding company that focuses on retail commercial investment banking currently has a 0.6x price to book value for the most recent quarter. Has not had stellar growth over the past couple of years, but it is a very small bank. I believe the market caps around $64 million. It has insider, tra insider trading through the positive. A PE ratio is at 12x. <clears throat> Revenue growth for the bank was better than for most in the industry over the past 12 months. It has a dividend at around 2.67% currently, with interest rates supposedly going up soon. This might be a good buy because it has some room to grow. I believe it's right around $4 a share right now. They've been acquiring other bank branches to grow their bank. A lot of a lot of high risk stocks, it's always like that, but right before quarterly reports, because a lot of people want to get out because they don't know what the stock is going to do. So if they're sitting on a, a good amount of profit, they'll take some of that profit right before uh, before quarterly reports, because there's a lot of times where stocks have dropped, you know, five percent, even though the news wasn't that bad. But people just freak out. Stock Market Samurai likes the, the uh, VWI next fund. And yeah, Vanguard typically does have low uh, expense ratios. All right, let's go into the uh, tip of the day. Oh, yeah. Look into SPXS. SPXS. It's a... Uh, inverse 3x leveraged ETF on the uh, for for the S&P 500 with more and more talk about a correction of the stock market this would be a good ETF to research it is leveraged 3x and could make you some quick money in the event of a stock market crash buy some options on it or just buy buy the ETF and just hedge a little bit 
So SPXS, there's a couple of them. I don't, I don't always rec I don't, I don't actually recommend 3x leveraged ETFs. But if you're looking to make some quick money or lose a lot of money very quickly, then uh, look into these. <laughs> Direction D I R E X I O N ETFs SPXS. So that's the tip of the day. That way you can hedge for in the event of a correction on the S. Yes, SPXS is the ticker for it. Let me pull it up real quick. It's the daily S&P 500 Bear 3X inverse leveraged ETF. There's a couple others ones that you can look into, but this would... Uh, this would be a good one to look into just in case we do have a market correction. All right. And if you haven't donated or if you haven't partnered with our ministry, we feed uh, 1,200 kids every single day. And uh, we're currently building a church. And if you'd like to, and if you love Check the Market, you can donate. And we'll give you this uh, beautiful Check the Market mug as our way of saying thank you to you. There it is. It has a nice big handle so you can fit your whole hand into it. So if you like standing outside of your house in the mornings, drinking your coffee, just staring down the neighbors, this would be the perfect mug for you because you can fit your whole fist into it. <laughs> All right. And if you haven't checked out any of our other broadcasts, please do so. We have the, our 11 a.m broadcast with evangelist jonathan or adalis revival today live then at 4 p.m we have maddie ortiz and then every night at 10 p.m we have our check the news with evangelist jonathan or magalis and then tomorrow morning at 7 30 a.m we have morning prayer with evangelist kofi and then we have at 9 20 check the market so make sure you tune into those And uh, I believe Evangelist Jonathan, yes, Evangelist Jonathan is going to be in Oklahoma City, if we have that graphic, this weekend, 16th through the 18th of July at Winners Church on North Bryant Avenue, and then in Hobbs, New Mexico, next week at Choose Life Church. And you can give on our website at revivaltoday.com or you can just do hashtag donate on Facebook or text RT to 50155. You can also do cash app, dollar sign RT give, Venmo at RT give. We also take PayPal, revivaltoday.com slash PayPal. And we also take cryptocurrencies. So whatever, whatever cryptocurrency you have left after the beating we've taken in the past couple of weeks, if you'd like to donate that and get out completely like, uh, like a, the gentleman from Dogecoin did, you can just scan that code right there. Or if you'd like to donate any other cryptocurrency, you can contact our office at 412-446-2332. Or you can mail it in, P.O. Box 7, Prosperity, PA, 1532 nine all right and do we have any uh any questions the two and three x leverage actually allows you to hedge more of your portfolio without using as much capital yes but it moves i mean if the market crashes it moves quick there's been there's been times where i lost a good amount of money Magal's husband and I, Abel and I, we used to uh, to invest some of those three X ones, and <laughs> it was a ride. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, thanks for uh, tuning in, and make sure you tune in at eleven for Evangelist Jonathan. I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>